I was alive. You might say Walter White gets the Breaking Bad version of A Happily Ever After. As Walt nears the end of his life, he enjoys complete control over how he goes. He takes out his enemies. He evades the police long enough to run out the clock. I don't want that bastard running out the clock. He decides at the last minute to save Jesse Pinkman. <laughs> and he accomplishes what he set out to do in the very first episode, provide for his family. I've done a terrible thing. But I did it for a good reason. I did it for us. After taking out Jack's gang and letting Jesse go, Walt wanders into the meth lab, and he passes his final moments in the place that ultimately meant the most to him. The place where he discovered his alter ego, Heisenberg, proved his genius, and realized his full potential. As we hear the Badfinger lyrics, He departs this life happily dreaming of his muse, the blue meth that proved to the world how grossly they underestimated him. The camera pulls out and the look of contentment on Walt's face says that, in the end, he got what he wanted. But the finale also makes us acutely aware of what this cost him. You can either look at it like he won or you can look at it like he lost. I mean, this guy destroys his entire family. As creator Vince Gilligan put it, Walt for years now has been looking through the wrong end of the telescope. Mr. White is a, is a meth empire really something to be that proud of. And we're left asking what it means to get everything you want if you've been chasing after the wrong things all along. I won. Before we go on, we want to tell you a little bit about this video sponsor. Movie is a curated film streaming service with a twist. You get 30 films per month, a new film every day. It's a hand-picked selection of movie gems from around the world. We're huge fans of movie at Screen Prism, so click the link in our description below to get a full month of movie for free. In the show's final episode, Felina, Walt is a dead man walking. Why don't you just, just die already? Just, just die. But this extreme control freak is determined to put his affairs in order the way he wants them. This means three things. One, getting his money to his family. We don't want your money, Walt. Two, taking out his enemies. And three, though he's not conscious of it, making good with his partner, Jesse Pinkman. Jesse Pinkman, you promised that hey. you would kill him and you didn't. Come on. So let's take a look at how he gets each of these three things. You, you this money, killed your him, Uncle Hank. You yeah, killed yeah. him. He needs this yeah. money. Can't all be Ever since the first episode, Walt has been making sense of his criminal activities with one justification. What I do, I do for my family. But I will provide for my family. I was and am providing for our family. All the sacrifices that I have made for this family. But despite all the millions he's made, getting that money to his family has proven harder than expected. They won't take it. My wife and son hate me. They won't take my money. The government won't let them anyway. Mike was no dummy, but every time he tried to get his nest egg to his granddaughter, it ended up in Uncle Sam's pockets. And Jack steals most of it, leaving Walt with only one barrel, or about 10 million. I'm leaving you a barrel. In this episode, Walt finds a workaround. He intimidates his former partners, Gretchen and Elliot, into creating a trust for Walter Jr. On my son's 18th birthday, which is 10 months and two days from today, you will give him this money in the form of an irrevocable trust. He pays Skylar one last visit and gives her the bargaining chip she needs to get free of Walt's legal messes. The coordinates for where Hanks and Gomez's bodies are buried. Now you trade that for a deal with the prosecutor. You get yourself out of this. And with his goal of ensuring his family's welfare at last achieved, Walt takes one last look at each kid. These shots of Walt regarding his wife and children for the last time before leaving to die capture the tragedy of what Walt has chosen to do with the final chapter of his life. For five seasons, he focused so intensely on the pretext of providing for his family that he lost that family. I've lost my family, everything that I care about. As Gilligan has said, 
For years now, he thought if he makes his family financially sound, that's really all he has to do as a man, as a provider, and as a father. But on the other hand, the family emotionally is scarred forever. Hank is dead. Walter Jr. and Marie detest Walt. Skylar is psychologically damaged from living as a hostage in her own home. And his baby daughter Holly will grow up in the shadow of her father's notoriety, without any real memories of him. Incidentally, Walt once reveals he lost his father at an early age. My father died when I was six. So this is a sad instance of history repeating. As much as Walt's words say he's motivated by family love, Everything that I do, everything. I do it to protect this family. Through his actions, he's actively distancing himself from his family. So buying that car, that was protecting your family? He pushes Skylar and Walter Jr. away whenever they reach out to help him. Gambling addiction is a sickness. You Listen, what is going on with me is not about some disease, it's about choices. Choices that I have made, choices I stand by. He defensively protests if they dare to speak about him as the victim of a disease or afraid for his life. I am not in danger, Skylar. I am the danger. Walt needs to be seen as a big, powerful man. A guy opens his door and gets shot and you think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. But Walt's family doesn't care about seeing him that way. They love the old Walt who was a good man, a good husband and father. Remembering you that way wouldn't be so bad. The bad way to remember you would be the way, the way you've been this whole last year. Walt doesn't really want to be there with his family. You're not moving back in, are you? This hasn't ever been about his family. These wild accusations, they could destroy our family. Damn and for what shit about family? One of the most crucial episodes that gives us a window into Walt's inner psychology is Fly, in which Walter obsesses over a fly that he says is causing contamination. There's uh, been a contamination. Wait, what? In this episode, we see Walt's two selves wrestling with each other as the repressed old Walter makes a last attempt to surface. I'm very sorry. Walt muses that he wishes he'd found that perfect moment to die, after he'd made enough money for his family, but before they found out about his new life. There was some perfect moment that had passed me right by. We can see here that on the deepest level, Walt knows that, spiritually, he's lost his family. He's no longer the same person they love. I've lived too long. You want them to actually miss you, you know? Walt goes on to say that the night everything went wrong is the night Jane died. <laughs> so we can see he has a deep guilt about that. I should never have left home. Never gone to your house. You might say it's the moment his soul was really lost. Oh, if I had just lived right up to that moment, and not one second more. The thing he was supposedly doing all this for is out of reach and can't be regained. So in the end, he says, We need to cook. What about the contamination? It's all contaminated. And of course here, Walt is talking about his own life. Throughout the series, what's most frustrating about Walt is that he is constantly lying. Elaborate, ornate, utterly unnecessary lies. Stop lying! In the finale, Walt achieves the slightest glimmer of a partial redemption by doing one very simple thing, telling the truth. During his final conversation with Skylar, he seems about to start his frequent refrain. All the things that I did, you need to understand. I have to hear one more time that you did this for the family. But then he says, I did it for me. I liked it. I was good at it. Skylar's relief is palpable. At the end of the pilot, she asked him to be truthful with her. The worst that you can do is shut me out. And ever since, he's done nothing but lie. Dad? Yeah. 
please, can you just tell the truth? This hasn't really been a marriage since the start of the show. I'm not your wife. I'm your hostage. But for this brief instant, we glimpse a small piece of the marriage they once had. In Ozymandias, we flash back to Walt and Skylar discussing their new baby's name. Hey, what do you think about Holly? Behind Walt in this shot is Jesse and the RV, his future, what's about to pull him away from his family. This flashback happens in the episode where Hank dies, so the illusion that he's done this for his family is finally shot dead for good. Through the tragic irony of Walt successfully providing for his family and losing their love in the process, the show is getting at what it feels like to be a man in a society that tells you you're not one unless you make bank. A man provides, and he does it because he's a man. While Walt's new alpha power comes with its share of thrills, Becoming that macho provider costs Walt everything, his decency, himself, and most certainly the family he's providing for. This costs me my family. So we have to ask, was it worth it? Mr. White, he's the devil. Walt's plan to finish off Jack's gang is the wish fulfillment part of the episode. Walt gets everything to go his way. Yeah, he is. He is smarter than you. He is luckier than you. Whatever you, whatever you think is supposed to happen, I'm telling you, the exact reverse opposite of that is gonna happen. Indeed, after being more or less possessed by his inner Heisenberg, Walt has come to enjoy an almost supernatural level of both cunning and fortune. In Felina, we see in full effect the Heisenberg that fans love, who always has something hidden up his sleeve. At the end of the penultimate episode, he was all but defeated. I'd like to speak to the agent in charge of the Walter White investigation. Walter White. Then he saw Gretchen and Elliot on TV, minimizing his involvement in gray matter. We're talking about a person who, who was there early on, but who had virtually nothing to do with the creation of the company and still less to do with growing it into what it is today. This moment snaps him back into action because what fuels Heisenberg's drive and his genius more than anything else is spite. In the pilot, we see Walt looking at the plaque for research from his gray matter days while he exercises. Later, we learn he's been monitoring the company's stock price every week. I look it up every week. And I sold my share, my potential, for $5,000. So it's the ultimate satisfaction when his plan to get the money to his family has the added bonus of putting these superior billionaires in their place. This is where you get to make it right. Walt embraces the terror he now inspires in civilized society. <laughs> All he needs are a couple of laser pointers wielded by Badger and Skinny Pete to make Gretchen and Elliot believe they're being monitored by expert hitmen. <sighs> Whatever happens to me tomorrow, they'll still be out there. Meanwhile, Walt scores a meeting at Jack's by crashing Todd's and Lydia's meeting, making up a fake story that he wants to sell them a new recipe. I have a new method that requires no methylamine. We don't know yet what Walt's real plan is when he walks into Jack's place, but the camera shows him paying special attention to his car keys. What were you doing before, shaving it? Yes. And sure enough, he's rigged his trunk with an M60 to take out Jack's entire gang through the wall. After the bloodbath, Walt answers Todd's phone. Is he done? Is he gone? And we find out that the cherry on top of the plan was poisoning Lydia. How are you feeling? Kind of under the weather? Like you've got the flu? That would be the ricin I gave you. So Walt gets the final satisfaction of wrapping up all his loose ends, and even being the one to tell Lydia how he played her. I slipped it into that stevia crap that you're always putting in your tea. This is a classic Heisenbergian plan. He tricked Lydia into thinking he was a liability and an easy target. I need the money. Even hamming up his cough. <laughs> Jesus, did you look at him? You'd be doing him a favor.
when, in fact, he was using his knowledge of her character against her, her predictability. 10 a.m. Every Tuesday morning, you and I met here. You're rather schedule-oriented, I guess. Her extreme caution, which surpasses even her greed. Right now, that's of not- Of course, we're not doing business with him. Her willingness to have people killed as, in Mike's words, a prophylactic measure. But here in the real world, we don't kill 11 people as some kind of prophylactic measure. And of course, her addiction to her favorite sweetener. And I'm assuming you don't have stevia. Never mind. I brought my own. And I'll need more stevia. And I need more stevia. Gilligan has compared the ricin to Chekhov's gun, the playwright's famous idea that if you show us a gun, at some point it has to go off. We've heard a lot about this ricin cigarette. Walt wanted Jesse to use it to poison Gus. Jesse thought it was used by Walt or by Gus to poison Brock, but no one has actually been poisoned by the ricin. So the writers managed to get their Chekhov's gun to fire just before the end. Goodbye, Lydia. The first line of Baby Blue tells us, Guess I got what I deserve. And Walt probably has got what he deserved for better and for worse. But when we met Walt, he was very much not getting what he deserved. He's been dealt a pretty rotten hand in life. This is a guy who gets lung cancer without ever having smoked. Mr. White, are you a smoker? No, never. Breaking Bad gets us on Walt's side in the pilot by introducing us to a bad, broken world, one that is first and foremost unjust. So it's easy to want beaten down Walt to fight back, even play a little dirty against this bunch of people who are mean, nasty, unlikable, and undeserving. There's a theme going throughout the show of the grave error of underestimating people. Not the personal Walt, but uh, you wouldn't know a criminal if he was close enough to check you for a hernia. Quanto malegra. And the Walter White we meet has been underestimated all his life. But how wrong they all were to write him off. Eisenberg. You're goddamn right. So the biggest satisfaction of the finale is that everyone else gets what they deserve too. Trust me, this woman deserves to die as much as any man I've ever met. Jack's gang, Todd and Lydia, very much had it coming. Billionaires Gretchen and Elliot get taken down a peg while the innocents catch a break. Felina creates that feeling that, in the end, Walt achieved some version of justice. We, we want to live in a moral universe. I want to believe that there is some sort of justice. And it's one of the greatest things uh, humankind has created for itself. Walt's final chapter benefits from, if not total moral justice, then a kind of poetic one. If the universe is indeed chaotic, if this is the one small way I can exert some control over it in the fiction that I write, maybe that's why I, I uh -huh. am drawn to writing in the first place. There is, a, there is a shape to it that is perhaps neither happy nor sad, but at least pleasing. As Gilligan has said, Walt is never going to redeem himself. He's just too far down the road to damnation. But at least he takes a few steps along that path. Walt can never come back from the unspeakable damage he's done and the lives he's taken, but he does do a couple of things in the finale that partially redeem him. One is telling the truth to Skylar, and the other is freeing Jesse. <laughs> so in the second part of this video, we'll look at why Walt decides to save Jesse and what the end of their mysterious partnership reveals about the show's underlying ethos. No, uh, I'm not doing what you want anymore. Hi guys, this is Alani, and today I want to talk to you about one of our favorite places to watch movies, Mubi. Mubi is a treasure trove of films from around the globe. Every day a new film is added and the oldest is taken away. So in this world where it's very easy to spend hours debating what you should watch, Mubi is like having a really cool friend with amazing taste in movies making it so much easier for you. They feature hard to come by masterpieces, indie festival darlings, influential art house and foreign films, lesser known films by your favorite famous directors, and more. Plus, you can even download the films to watch offline and there are no ads, ever. One movie you can watch right now on Mubi is Itu Mama Tambien. It's directed by Alfonso Cuaron, whose newest movie, Roma, has been earning rave reviews and Oscar buzz. Itu Mama Tambien is a hilarious, moving story following two teenage boys who set off on a cross-country trip with an older, married woman. 
point is we can't recommend Mubi highly enough. You can try it out for free for a whole month. Just click the link in the description below.